is needed by your little fence is put the train is to an end. You and I together we can, we can make a difference. You and I together we can, we can make this world a better place. For you and me, for everybody, we can make it happen. When it's you and me together we can. Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of RACE, or Rabies Awareness Campaign for Education. Together, we can. Here, we will talk about everything you need to know about rabies. Do you have a dog? Or have you wanted to pet someone's dog before? What's the first thing you will say? Would it be along the lines of, Nangangagat ba yan? Dogs are very cute animals, so cute, that we even dress them up and treat them as babies. But why are people so afraid of them? Even though they have been part of our everyday lives, especially concerning their bites. Today, we will learn the meaning of rabies, the history of rabies, the signs and symptoms of rabies infection in both human and animal, and the current situation of rabies in the Philippines and in the world. And by the end of this episode, you should be able to define rabies, know their causes, give at least two signs and symptoms from both human and animals, and remember at least one ordinance or law concerning rabies. I know it may sound overwhelming, but don't worry, I will guide you along the way. My name is Denise, and this is Din, Din and we are your hosts for this episode. Shall we get started? Dogs are the most common pet around the world. One factor can be because they are considered as man's best friend. In our country, dogs are even treated as part of the family. However, we should be mindful and careful when handling our pet dogs. This is because research found out that dogs are the number one source of rabies among humans. This disease is one of the leading causes of death not only in the country but also around the world. According to the World Health Organization, rabies is a zoonotic disease caused by a virus. This simply means that the disease can be transmitted from animals to humans. Meanwhile, Global Alliance for Rabies Control added that rabies virus attacks the central nervous system, causing severely distressing neurological symptoms before causing the victim to die. The virus responsible for the disease is Lysavirus genus within the family Rabiroviridae, and it is known to attack the central nervous system, which can cause death to us humans. And lastly, Center for Disease Control and Prevention refers rabies to a deadly virus spread to people from the saliva of infected animals. Rabies is known to target mammals like dogs, cats, mouse, and monkey. So in general, we should remember that rabies is a deadly disease caused by a virus transmitted to humans by animals. History, rabies came from the Latin word raver, which is associated towards madness, rage, and fury. This term was first used to describe the disease caused by the virus in 1590s. 
Many researchers argued that rabies is one of the oldest diseases known to mankind. Several researches have proven that the disease has been existing in the world for quite a long time now. Let me tell you about some of these. The earliest story on rabies dates back in 2300 BC. Imagine how old that is. It's exactly 4,666 years ago. But some claimed that the first written record about rabies was found in the Codex of Eshnuna, published around 1930 BC. The code forced the owners of a rabid dog to pay heavy fine when the person bitten by their dog dies. Other artifacts proving the long roots of rabies includes the paper written by Aristotle in 300 BC. And it was only during the 16th century when Girolamo Fracastoro discovered rabies as a fatal and an incurable disease affecting humans and animals. Since its discovery, the rabies continues to be one of the leading causes of deaths in different countries. Until a very significant event happened in 1885, which made a mark in the history of rabies. Can you guess it? It was when a French chemist and biologist, Louis Pasteur, accidentally made a vaccine for rabies. According to stories, on the day of July 6, 1885, a group of people rushed Pasteur's laboratory in France and asked him to treat a young rabid victim. The victim was Joseph Meester, a nine-year-old young boy bitten by a rabid dog 14 times. Not yet sure if this created vaccine for animals will work on humans too, Pasteur was convinced by Joseph's mother to try it to her son. Fortunately, the delicate trial turned out well and was able to save Joseph's life. Since then, this discovery of Pasteur has not only saved lives, but also paved the way for other immunization researches. With this, people can now prevent human deaths due to rabies. Isn't it fun learning history, guys? Knowing that an incurable disease like rabies has been plaguing the world for a very, very long time now. Scary, isn't it? But I wonder, how is that even possible? It's normal for humans to get diseases from other humans, right? But how can dogs transmit rabies to us? Hmm, maybe this next part of our lesson will come handy in figuring it out. Welcome guys! Earlier you learned the concept about rabies. For this part, I'll bring more information about how rabies can be transmitted to anyone including you. Well, this part is just easy to remember since I'll only summarize the discussion into three causes. For number one, as I mentioned earlier, rabies is transmitted through the bite of an infected animal. You might be wondering which animals I am talking about. Can you guess which animals belong to the list? The top one answer is unfortunately the animals that you usually have as pets at home, like your cuddly and fluffy cats and dogs. For your information, dogs are actually responsible to almost 96% of the rabies cases in Southeast Asia alone, which includes our country, the Philippines. Aside from your pets, Livestock animals are also potential carriers of the rabies virus. Some of the examples include cows and goats. But don't worry, there were no reported cases yet of getting infected through eating a cooked meat or drinking the milk of infected animals. The reported cases only include those who were exposed directly to the animals during slaughtering or the milking processes. Another group of animals who can carry the virus is the group of wild animals including bats and monkeys. So next time, when you see these animals, be sure to be careful not to get bitten by them. For number two, rabies can also be transmitted through non-bite methods, but still includes the presence of the saliva of the infected animal. So if you're suspecting that an animal is rabid, be sure not to get licked in these areas. 1. An open wound. 2. Scratches. Or 3. In sensitive areas like your eyes. Also, you can get infected by the rabies virus through airborne means. 
This can happen when you enter caves inhabited by many bats, or when you visit a laboratory for rabies studies. Just remember to always be ready and be extra careful in these scenarios. And lastly, for number three, there are some rare cases of transmission which involved human-to-human -human transmission. But first things first, it's not like the zombie infection that you see in movies. This transmission, as stated by the World Health Organization, happened when the organs from an infected person were donated to a normal person. Some of the reported cases included donations of infected cornea, kidney, and liver. But take note, none of these were ever documented in the Philippines. Just remember that it's as easy as counting 1 to 3. 1 through bites, 2 through non-bite means, and 3 through rare modes of transmission. So I hope you learned a lot from this chapter about the causes and modes of transmission of rabies. Oh hey! So did you find the information handy? I hope you did, because here is a food for thought for you. Given how the rabies is transmitted and how long it has been a problem, do you think it is possible to achieve a rabies-free world? Speaking of rabies-free, how can we tell that your bantai and muning are safe from rabies? Would you know right away? Would the effects immediately surface? Would it be better to stay away from them forever? Fear not, friends. You can still cuddle, kiss, and sleep with your lovely pets. Just make sure that muning and bantai are not showing these following signs and symptoms. We actually have three faces when it comes to animals. In this case, I will only focus on dogs. The early signs of rabies can be seen in the first face. This is where a dog can be observed to have subtle changes in their behavior. These changes can be a change in the tone of the dog's bark, <laughs> sudden loss of appetite, <laughs> and the dog always chewing on the bitten part. On the second phase, we can already see the symptoms becoming severe. A friendly dog may turn into an aggressive one. <laughs> while usual excited dogs may turn quiet. Either way, any type of dog will go into an irritable face. No, good boy! A dog might also just bite or snap suddenly in any form of stimulus. We can also see them eating unusual things and hiding in dark places. In some cases, we can see them staggering when walking. The last phase is the paralysis phase, which is the most severe. In this stage, the dog's throat and jaw muscles are already paralyzed. This is the time we see the dog forming foam in its mouth. Because of this, they have trouble swallowing food that causes choking. After that, dogs go into coma that leads to eventual death. That's too sad. Anyway, those are the signs and symptoms that we see when a dog or any other animal is infected with rabies. Look out for these signs!
Now that you have learned what are the signs and symptoms of rabies infection in animals, it is now the time to know about the symptoms that we can see on the person bitten by a rabid animal. Here are some signs and symptoms of rabies infection in humans. Rabies usually takes one to three months of incubation. The bitten human often suffers from fever, headache, and an unexplainable discomfort in the body. The rabies patient also experiences a tingling, pricking, and burning sensation on the area of skin with a bite wound. Now, these are only the initial symptoms that could manifest on the rabies victim. The infection may develop into two forms, the furious and the paralytic rabies. Take a look at this. This is called the furious form of rabies. 80% of the infected people go through this behavior change. And most of the time, this is how people imagine rabies victims. You have probably heard that rabies victims become afraid of water. Is that true? Yes, it is. A human infected with rabies becomes hydrophobic. When the infection progresses, even a mere sight of water can trigger spasms in the neck and throat of the patient. The patient may also suffer from depression, show extreme anger and irritability. Lastly, death occurs by cardiorespiratory arrest. These manifestations are the common perceptions of people about rabies victims. But did you know that 20% of rabies victims may not show these symptoms? Instead, they experience a paralytic rabies. In paralytic rabies, the muscles of the infected human becomes numb, starting from the area where he or she is bitten. It then spreads through the whole body until it develops into a comatose, which later on will lead to death. This case is often misdiagnosed, which adds to underreporting of rabies cases. Remember, rabies can't be treated anymore once the symptoms become apparent. You now have an idea what could happen to a person infected with rabies. Let's exercise our brains, shall we? There are different types of signs and symptoms in both human and animal infection of rabies. But can you find similarities in some of their symptoms? Oh, you're back. I was just thinking, was learning all of this worth it? Whoa, whoa, before you close the video, hear me out, okay? You found out the definition of rabies and its history and also its signs and symptoms. But is it really a threat? Tell me honestly, do you know someone who died from rabies infection? Have you seen a dog or a cat infected by it? Or are we really just making a big deal out of this, just like an upcoming zombie apocalypse? How about we check it out? Let's go around the world and see how really a threat rabies is. Hi there! Now let us move on and discuss some hard data about cases of rabies around the world and in the Philippines. Don't worry, you don't need to memorize this. These are just to give you a picture of how big of a problem rabies is in the world. According to World Health Organization, around 55,000 people die yearly due to rabies infection. Over 30,000 of these deaths are from Asia and Africa, wherein more than 20,000 deaths come from India. Pretty scary, right? Well, this is not a hopeless case at all. In fact, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there are numerous countries that have been declared as rabies-free. Some of these are Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, Greece, 
Netherlands, New Zealand, and United Kingdom. Now let us go to the cases of rabies infection in the Philippines. Did you know that the Philippines was reported to be one of the top 10 countries with numerous incidents of rabies infection? In fact, around 300 to 400 Filipinos die from rabies infection every year. In 2015 alone, there were 220 reported deaths of rabies victims. On the other hand, incidents of animal bites almost doubled up from 260,000 to 500,000 in just a span of four years. However, you must not hastily attribute this to the assumption that rabies is becoming more prevalent in our country. Instead, we can say that these rising numbers can be because people are becoming more aware of the fatality of rabies, and they now know where to go in order to be treated. Now, let us learn about the important policies in the Philippines that help us combat rabies. Are you ready? First, we have the Republic Act 9482. This is also known as the Anti-Rabies Act of 2007. This act aims to control and eliminate the spread of human and animal rabies. It includes the responsibilities of pet owners in handling their pets accordingly, that is, ensuring regular vaccination and proper grooming. The act also covers the responsibilities of government agencies in providing accessible facilities, equipment, and education for the people. Aside from this, we also have the Executive Order No. 84, also known as declaring March as the Rabies Awareness Month, rationalizing the control measures for the prevention and eradication of rabies and other appropriating funds therefore. This particular executive order mandates the creation of the National Rabies Prevention and Control Committee, its main implementing body. It also includes an order on conducting massive information drives in schools and other institutions about rabies during the month of March. See how pressing the issue of rabies is? Now let us learn about some policies about rabies in the provincial, city, and municipal levels. In Los Baños, Laguna, they have Ordinance 2005-458. It penalizes owners of astray animals through imposing confinement or custodial fees for the animals. Aside from that, there is also City Ordinance No. 544 in Bacolod City. It is an ordinance that establishes dog owners' responsibilities such as requiring fences or cages for their pets. This is to ensure that harm or injury caused by rabies and other factors will be prevented. Lastly, this Marina City passed Ordinance No. 01-S-2014, which seeks to provide control and elimination of rabies in this Marina City. Now that you have learned about these, I hope that you could also identify the policies or ordinances present in your own cities or municipalities. You have to remember that these ordinances are important because they help protect the citizens, including you, against the infection of rabies. time is up. We have already reached the goal for today's episode. Thank you for watching and I hope you are looking forward for the next installment of this series. I am Denise and this is Dindin. We hope you guys have learned a lot about rabies. Bye! Dogs and cats, they are a little But do you know what to do when they come near to you? Do you know what to do when they bite you? Dogs and cats and other animals may carry rabies all around But do you know where to go? Do you know who to call? Come sing with me this song It pays to 
We can make a difference 